as we come to reflect on God's word together. Let us pray. We rejoice, O Lord, and we celebrate the peace that we have been given, the peace that leads us to understanding, an everlasting peace that we might celebrate together and offer forward unto all the world as we come into the grace and peace that is in Christ Jesus. So let our hearts be inspired and the revelation of your word that gives life to all life, calling us to everlasting life. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It would seem presumptuous to proclaim that we are friends, that we are the, the good friends, the trusted friends of Jesus. It would be presumptuous if Jesus hadn't said it first. When it comes to the gospel in Christ, this is one of the, the passages that as you read it, it should put a lump in your throat every time, every time. Jesus says, and John writes it down so it can be shared as good news to the whole of the church, to all of God's people, that you're not just in the circle of disciples, it's not just for them, but that you are all of us, all those who proclaim Jesus as Lord, who, who name him as, as brother, as the son of God. He says, you're my friends. You are Jesus' friends. And the context of Christ's words is, is the very invitation of the whole gospel. And that Jesus is making it clear to us as, as an example to, a, to the witness of our faith and the fulfillment of God's law and God's commands in Christ's great commandment in the covenant of his blood that we must love and love one another. And the very best example of that love is to lay down our lives for our friends. Who did Jesus lay down his life for? For his friends. For you. Now, as you can tell, if you have read the sermon title, what friends Jesus has in us, it's a term in the phrasing of the popular hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. And given today, it's appropriate because that hymn has its, in its origins has a bit of a Mother's Day story. Let me share that with you. Joseph Striven, a man from Ireland, had faced real tragedy in his life. When he was a younger man, he was engaged to be married, but only the day before that wedding, his fiancée drowned in a tragic accident. And in that, he took his sorrows in his prayers to Jesus. But afterwards, he moved to Canada, to the Woodstock area in Ontario, and had there a fresh start. And around this time, he was 25 years old. And here in Canada, he met and fell in love again. And all seemed joyful and hopeful. But mere weeks before they were to be married, his second fiancée died of an illness. So a few years later, when Joseph penned the line, all our sins and griefs to bear, you can imagine he was reflecting on all the sins and griefs that he had borne to Jesus, that had led him to deepen and strengthen his ministry. For in 1855, he wrote those verses as he penned the poem, writing it before it ever became a hymn, as comforting words to his ill mother. This is where that hymn began, as a, as a part of a letter to his mother to make her feel better, back in his hometown of Banbridge, Ireland. See, he couldn't afford to go, because he had taken, in his ministry, he had taken a vow of poverty and was without the resources to make such a journey. 
but he had the resources of spirit to write and offer his mother and then the whole of the church those words. And in the same humble vow, he decided to publish that hymn anonymously. And it was over 25 years later that he was recognized and it was realized that he had written the hymn that grew in so much popularity that began as a letter to mother and words inspired by life's real griefs that has now become so widely used throughout the church and the missionary world, the full credit he barely knew. That hymn reminds us that Jesus offers us friendship, not just servanthood. As the gospel tells us, the privilege of friendship that comes in faith and he in joy of that friendship has called us not to, to, to keep it as something for ourselves, but to share it with as much of the world as we can. Why is it that we so often act as though friendship is some exclusive club? Why does the world seem to teach that friendship should, should only be with those who are like-minded? Our friendship in Jesus is to be like the friendship that existed among Jesus and the disciples who were not all alike, did not always agree, and they had questions. And they would disagree with each other openly. They disagreed, they debated, they discussed, they trusted each other enough with their questions about what life was about. They even questioned Jesus. They brought their pleas to him, their misunderstandings, their struggles. That's trust. Not working out ways of simply agreeing with each other just to get along. But more than that, working things through unto truth. With the very source of truth. What a gift. And we're all invited to that gifted friendship. We are all of us to be friends of Jesus and friends because of Jesus. Because he loves and he calls us to love one another. To bear each other's grief. As he bore our grief to the cross, even unto death. When I consider the people that God has given me, has given us to share our faith, our life's lessons, the hardships that the celebrations. I find that in this family of faith I have been gifted with many. I would call in their, in their grace and their mercy. I would call them as mothers unto me. Perhaps you share with me the special celebration of mothers as we do on this Mother's Day. Yes, we celebrate mother who brought us into the world, mother who saw us through childhood and early life, but also those who in motherly affection have been kind, the kind of friends who sacrifice their time, their patience, their forgiveness, and everything that has helped us grow into the people of faith that we are. Even Jesus displays that same motherly affection in his journey to the cross as he talked about the kingdom of God as it really was, as Jesus said, as he mourned that generation of faith and what they were about to do, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Our friendship in Jesus is not now about what Jesus is going to do to make it happen. It is done. But we have this opportunity in the friendship we share in Jesus, that we are already welcomed to in Jesus, that we can celebrate together in Jesus to be the best friends in the world. Save Christ for one another. Do we honor the love that we have been given? Jesus desires to embrace us, to gather us in. 
And he has invited us to take part in gathering in one another, to mother one another, to encourage and bless one another, to honor one another. And we honor one another and we honor Jesus Christ when we clinging to faith, we offer to one another the same mercy that brings us, that has brought us to this faith. It wasn't the anger of God's might that is celebrated in Scripture, but the power showed throughout Scripture, throughout the, the whole narrative of Scripture of mercy and salvation. That is the real testimony of the prophets, major and minor. And as much as we might read about judgment and punishment, it is the mercy for God's people. The purpose is about grace and redemption because the path of God's judgment does not lead to destruction, but leads us who believe to eternal life. And such friendship, the one and greatest friendship we have is in Jesus. And it is for everyone. But whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also is that begotten of him. That simply means that if you are in this friendship with Christ, you become part of the embodiment of love that God offers to the world. And you know, having experienced it, having received it, how much this world needs to feel and know that love. God offers it through his son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And God offers it through you because Christ has invited you to be a part of that relationship. It's a powerful place. It's a place of great honor. And it's an opportunity for us to honor those who have gifted us with this love. You know those beloved people who were not so picky that they would love you? That's who I'm talking about. They were friends of Jesus. And when we have lived out that old saying that embodied the expression, you know, that they have a face or a faith or an attitude or a whatever, a life that only a mother could love. When you love them, that's the love that Jesus calls us to have with him. And so we should not all look at our lives. And so we should all look into our lives at who we have been called to love. And shouldn't look at our lives as some exclusive friendship club. It means that we are going to love more than those who we like to love. It means that in order to be true and grateful to the love we have been given in Jesus Christ, our Lord, we need to offer his love to everyone who God has placed in our lives. Offer it to all. The friends who might be our biggest challenge, the friends who are our greatest help. And in all things, sharing this life of faith and the way that faith brings us all to a spirit of joy. And more thanks to give than flowers can express is the thanks of ongoing, outgoing, and faith-showing love that causes those who have loved us to see God's love grow in us as well. Yes, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege. And what love we have been given to share.